Hi everybody, welcome back. Today I'm super excited to share with you a project that I've been working on for a long time and this is going to change the way you operate your home lab. So whether that's running Freak Trade as your cryptocurrency bots or things like Nextcloud for your file storage or GitLab for your code repository, XWiki, Open Project, or for media, whether that's Sonar, Radar, your Qubit Torrent client, and presenting all that with a Plex server, hosting websites, mail servers, Pi-hole for your DNS-based ad blocking, home automation with Home Assistant, MQTT broker, MySQL databases, or traffic web proxy to wrap it all together with DNS and SSL certificates, all of those things that ride in your home lab, you might have some old aging hardware, it makes a lot of noise, it's kind of ugly, consumes some power, and you like something that's maybe a little more elegant, consumes less power, and just doesn't look awful. <laughs> Let's be honest. I wanna share this project with you. This is something that I've developed. I designed and 3D printed all of these components, and I don't sell these. I'm gonna show you how to build them yourself. I'm going to give you all the parts list. I'm going to give you all the 3D printable files. So if you have access to a 3D printer, you can make this yourself. It's nice. It sits on your bookshelf, consumes very little power, doesn't make any noise. And you built it yourself. That's amazing, right? People ask you about it. It's a conversation piece, right? Man, cool. Now, what is it and what does it do? If you've done any research and you already know the differences between ARM and x86 CPU architectures, you know that ARM is way more efficient. Now. If you, when you hear ARM, you probably think of mobile phones and tablets and things like that, but ARM has really, really taken off and really has a lot of horsepower, especially in formats like this. So let's take a look at this. Now, what is inside? That's probably the question you're asking. This is not just a pile of Raspberry Pis. That's not what this is. This is a lot more powerful than that. What's inside is five nodes of a similar type of ARM single board computer called a Rock Pi 4. This uses a Rock Chip RK3399 system on chip. Now, if you do a little research, compare that to even the current generation Raspberry Pi 4, it absolutely blows it away. So we're using five of those. One of them is dedicated to storage. We need things like NFS, we need SMB shares for your Windows clients, we need S3 object-based storage, things like that. So we've dedicated a node just to that. The other four are left over for all of your compute. This runs all of your Docker containers. With those four nodes, there's plenty of power left over for other tasks. All those things that I mentioned before, this system runs all of those easily with many freak trade instances, for example, which can be a little CPU intensive. I've got plenty of overhead left to test different pieces of software and things like that. So I really like this. It's done away with all of my x86 hardware this is my entire home lab and it only consumes 30 watts can you believe that 30 watts so why don't we take a look under the hood i think that's probably what you're really interested in at this point let's take a look so under the hood this is what the inside looks like two hard disks that are mirrored on the outer edge we have an eight port switch that we've taken the housing off of to keep it nice and thin. We have a DC to DC power supply to provide power for the entire unit. And we have on the top is our fifth node, which is for storage, and a pair of three and a half inch disks providing our storage. Up top, you see we have just a single fan that is cooling the entire unit. So why don't we take a look at what the airflow on this looks like? Okay, so if I just take this main duct off the top, what this does is it, it sends air down across all four of the main compute nodes. What I've got is simply the four nodes and they're all facing inwards to one another. That way they get good airflow across their heat sinks, which then goes down below and exits out the bottom of the unit. So this spreads the air out evenly and keeps the units nice and cool. There's enough residual airflow inside the housing to keep the disks cool and also just enough intentional leakage to keep that top storage node cooled as well. That allows us to just use a single fan to cool the entire unit. It's nice and quiet, plenty of airflow, and keeps everything cool and happy. Why am I blowing air downward when heat rises? Well, let's take a look at this. I'm gonna go ahead and put the lid back on. What we can see is, so the air is coming in through the top. I made this fine mesh pattern for the air intake, and this is gonna keep any insects or things like that out. And then the ventilation, 
at the bottom where all the air exits, it's around the bottom here, all the way around. So just a couple millimeters, and that's plenty of surface area around the entire space of this to keep everything cool. Now, with the air blowing out, it means insects cannot really wander in. And you might think that that might be a little overkill. However, um, I don't care where you live in the world, <laughs> you have insects around. And the last thing you want to do is open this up and find that an insect has made its home inside your server and has caused problems. So with the air flowing out the bottom, no insects are gonna be crawling in. And this is a pretty fine mesh on the top. Not likely anything is getting in through the top. So that's the mindset behind that. Now on the exterior, we don't have any lights. We don't have any buttons. All we have is our ethernet port and our 12 volt power in. That's it, that's all we need. This sits nicely on the shelf in your office, is a nice attractive piece and runs all the services that you need to operate in your home lab. So this is the Rock Arm Cluster Home Edition. Later on, I'm also going to be releasing a rack mount version of this with a lot more nodes and more power. So guys, if you're interested in this project and you're not already, please subscribe, hit that thumbs up button. It helps me out a lot. Hit the notification bell so you see the additional videos coming in as we dive deep into actually building this. I want to help you build this. I want it to be something that is fun for you and you enjoy and it helps you out in your home lab. So if you build this and then you decide you still need a little more horsepower, or you really just like rack mount things, we're gonna do that one too. And that's got a lot more nodes, a lot more power. Now when I say a lot more power, that's great, but this already runs everything in my home lab. And if you've been following me for a while, you know I run a lot of stuff at home and this handles everything easily. Thanks for joining me today. I hope this is something that interests you and stay tuned for the next one. Thanks for watching. See you next time.